Hello and welcome back to the Naoko Ogigami retrospective as part of Asian Cinema Season 2. And very simply, without really much preamble, we're going to get right back to Daisuke, who's going to be talking about one of her films called Love is 575, I believe, which is one of the films, unfortunately, that is unavailable to English speakers. So I couldn't see this film. And that's unfortunate. I really want to kind of see every film she's made. At some point, I might track it down and just try and watch it in Japanese. I don't know. Uh, it's just one of those things where I just, I really, it bugs me that I can't be complete. But um, regardless, you're going to get to hear some thoughts on the film from Daisuke. So let's head over to Tokyo now and hear what he has to say about, I believe, Love is 575. Greetings from Tokyo. This is Daisuke again. And I'd like to talk to you about this film directed by Naoko Ogigami, which is called Koi wa Go Nana Go, which can be translated into English as Love is 575. 575 in the title refers to haiku, which is a type of Japanese poetry. And it has a certain rigid structure in that it is only three lines and the first line has five syllables, the second line has seven syllables, and the third line has um, five syllables, that's five, seven, five. And usually the, the, the poem is meant to capture a certain mood or feeling, uh, sometimes connected to nature or other kind of uh, physical trait or uh, scene of nature of something uh, that sort and there's uh, supposed to be some kind of feeling or thing or expression that is evoked so that is the nature of haiku and the uh, uh, there's a certain uh, way in which haiku as poetry can be evaluated and uh, of course, if uh, there's a certain link with uh, Japanese haiku and the use of Japanese language, the use of Japanese uh, kanji characters, uh, the use of certain uh, uh, syllable phrases, uh, the use of a kind of a playfulness in the language and the written characters. So there's a lot of uh, intricacy and a lot of creativity and uh, thus a lot of uh, potential power that can be uh, created uh, when you have a good uh, haiku poem. You know, the same is true, I think, in English with respect to uh, something like iambic pentameter. Uh, you know, you have to have certain, uh, a certain structure. And if the structure is maintained, then the point, therefore, is trying to figure out a number of uh, words that come together in a way that uh, suggest a feeling or a mood or an image. And of course, uh, uh, you know, poet, very famous poets um, and playwrights, etc., can come together and really have a wonderful command over the English language. Well, the same is uh, true for Japanese haiku. Uh, so that's a general background as to what haiku is. Uh, and that's very important for this film because this is a film, uh, again, which is directed by Naoko Ogigami, and this is from 2004. And this is a film which is about a group of high school students who are uh, part of this club in high school. And the club's purpose is to form a team uh, of, I think, five members. And this team is supposed to be representing the school in this uh, haiku competition. Uh, that's uh, a competition that is uh, among uh, many different uh, teams from various schools and they come together and they actually have to compete uh, and come up with uh, the best haiku poem or the best set of haiku poems and then debate them. And then at the end of the debate, they are evaluated by a, a, a panel of judges. And the team that gets the most points in that evaluation proceeds to the next round. Uh, so it's, a, it's kind of a competition of that sort. And then the finalists meet. Uh, and then the winner of the final round is the champion of the, the competition. So uh, that's the general backdrop of this film. And you have this set of uh, high school students in this particular high school that come together uh, due to certain uh, peculiar circumstances. And they come together and they are, uh, for maybe lack of a better phrase, they're a bit uh, misfits uh, in the sense that they are a bit outside the popular cliques in the 
high school. Uh, they are a bit standoffish. They are a bit uh, odd, for lack of a better word. Uh, they aren't necessarily accepted in the general high school society. So they are outsiders and misfits, and they don't necessarily have a lot of friends necessarily. But they have their own charm and uh, uh, purity of character and earnestness of character uh, and uh, due to a certain set of circumstances they come together and they try to uh, form this team and then they try to represent their school uh, in this uh, haiku competition. This is a very interesting film. It is a film that I think deals with outsiders in uh, a certain special type of society. So here we have misfits uh, or people who don't necessarily fit in uh, 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 comfortably, shall we say, in this uh, high school environment. So in the sense this is carrying on the same line, through line, uh, uh, character or thematic through line that we have seen in earlier uh, Okigami films, you know, the, the idea of the outsider. Uh, coming into this new environment or society. And indeed, that theme is doubled in this film. Not only do you have uh, people who are not necessarily fitting in to this general high school society, but then we take those group of uh, high school students and then we transplant them into this new world of haiku competition, which is also a very odd and strange world, and one where I think it's not so much in the common knowledge, at least as far as I'm aware, in Japan. So this is a very very interesting uh, world, a new kind of world that we are uh, witness to, and thus these characters are uh, placed into this world because they're all newcomers into this world. So we have again the, the outsiders in this new environment or this new world. Uh, so this is again another uh, trend in Ogigami's films. What I love about this film is that it is, <clears throat> on the one hand, it is pretty cliched in terms of this, uh, you know, um, uh, kind of misfit group of kids who are the, uh, maybe they, they, there's no, uh, they, they don't have any training, they're not strong, and yet they try to come together due to a sheer, um, uh, kind of sheer willpower and uh, the power of, of not just friendship, but also the power of, to be able to express yourself. Um, uh, so in that sense, it, it seems like it might be a bit cliched because, you know, of course they're going to proceed or, you know, they're going to uh, maybe proceed in the competition, etc. So it's this idea they come together they train they're not really well prepared and yet somehow they try to find a way to get to the finals so uh, so in that sense it is cliched but on the other hand uh, what's interesting about the story is that an ogigami I think avoids other sorts of cliches uh, in favor of more time to let the characters grow so for example she I think will uh, uh, not uh, succumb to the cliche of let's say characters meeting and they fall in love or something like that. No, no, we don't get anything like that, but rather we get something that is much more in the long term, much more interesting, which is you have uh, the camera giving time to let these characters breathe and to let the characters uh, uh, struggle with their shyness and uh, struggle with who they are as individuals. And then also trying to let their those characters uh, express themselves in the context of the haiku competition. And which is not a very easy thing, of course. It's not easy to express oneself uh, and be subject to the potential ridicule of people around you. So this is a real challenge for Ogigami's characters. And I love Ogigami here for respecting the characters enough to give them time to think and to ponder their circumstances and their existences perhaps and giving us this uh, wonderfully uh, measured film that is you know it, it's not wholly serious there is a, a wonderful comedic tone that gives the whole film a wonderful sense of balance uh, but at the same time it is a film that does deal sometimes with uh, fairly serious issues on the one hand but uh, does so with a, a, a deafness of hand that is uh, I think uh, now um, uh, very clearly uh, the hand of a very skilled and talented director that is Naoko Ogigami so this is a very uh, potentially rich film it's I don't think it's her best film 
film. Uh, I, uh, granted, it, there are uh, bits of the film that I would say are maybe a little bit too cliched, but that doesn't uh, detract too much from the film as an overall experience. I think it's a very pleasant film and one that will uh, surely please uh, people who are uh, into Ogigami's films. And I should say another thing too, which is that Ogigami's films here are also uh, telling us or teaching us uh, something about what it is to be sort of Japanese, you know, the Japanese-ness of uh, the use of haiku and how these misfit characters come together and on the one hand try to adopt the traditions of haiku poetry, the traditions of Japanese-ness on the one hand, and yet on the other hand trying to infuse it with their own sense of individuality, which is the um, energy of now, of the now, of the moment, rather than necessarily uh, uh, adhering wholly to some kind of um, a revered past. So I like this sort of fusion that's going on here, which is giving the, the sense of haiku, a sense of life, and a sense of energy, uh, which is uh, uh, really a, a, a wonderful trait uh, that I see Ogigami uh, dealing with, this idea of infusing a Japanese-ness or what might be considered traditional Japanese-ness with a sense of freshness and vigor. Uh, again, uh, a wonderful film, a, a real charming film, a delightful film. Not uh, necessarily a, a major work, a major masterpiece, uh, but it is, it is not a failure. It is, it is quite a success in terms of a complete film. So this is Koi wa Go Nanago, or Love is 575, from 2004. Take care. Hey, all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and calling into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. <laughs> but he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...